Well, I'm representing a surgeon named Joseph Sparks. He was the second surgeon of the 8th Tennessee, which was the unit formed for the North uh, in, the, uh, in 1863 <clears throat> up in uh, Kentucky. Can you tell me about uh, the Civil War surgery that took place after the Battle of Franklin? Well, Civil War surgery was done uh, like at the Carnton Plantation and uh, Carter House as uh, field hospitals. And the wounded were brought there uh, by the thousands, <clears throat> both north and south. The uh, surgeons were non-combatants, so they treated both sides pretty equally uh, with what they had. Uh, the red flag symbolizes a field aid station that was set up like 50 yards behind a battle line. Battle lines were kind of fluid and went back and forth. Uh, an assistant surgeon would set up an aid station where the uh, wounded would be brought. It was a non-combatant area. Uh, after the first aid was done at the aid station, they put them on a stretcher like a Halstead litter and take them back to a field hospital, which was several miles behind the battle line, and that's signified by a yellow flag with a green H. <clears throat> that's where they did the amputations and bullet extractions. Now, if you could mention about here, is there maggots? <laughs> well, not so much the maggots, but the, the finger bowl of the slow assistant surgeon. Uh, ether and chloroform wore off in about 14 minutes, so the surgeries had to be done rather rapidly or the patient would start to wake up and not be too happy. Uh, they had, uh, they didn't have EKGs, a pulse ox, or capnometry. You couldn't really measure the depth of the sedation, and uh, if they overdosed the patient, they ran the risk of putting them into respiratory arrest. So surgeries had to be done rather rapidly, or well, the patient would not be too happy. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> one doctor set a record cutting the upper leg off of the patient in 75 seconds. Unfortunately, the assistant surgeon lost two fingers, the patient lost a testicle, but that record stands today. And what about the use of maggots? Uh, well, they didn't use maggots deliberately. Uh huh. They were rather tasty, though. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, at the end of the war, they found that the Confederate surgeons were having fewer complications with the surgery than the Northern surgeons, which didn't make any sense to anybody because the North had all the resources. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> they found that uh, because of the blockade, the South had to improvise, adapt, and overcome the problems, the uh, restrictions. So one of the things that they were doing, up north they could change the width of dry dressing two to three times a day. Down south they went two to three days without changing the dressing. They wound up with maggots growing in the wounds, <clears throat> and the maggots were eating the dead tissue, not living tissue. Another thing is they had to use things like horsehair. <clears throat> you can see how stiff horsehair is. And in order to make it uh, more pliable, they had to dip it in boiling water. And in essence, they were sterilizing the needle and thread, and there were fewer complications with their surgeries.